Welcome back, everyone. Long time no see. Uh, we're back again with the Cumberland Thunder podcast, and hopefully you'll start seeing these more often, especially kind of month of December and in the winter months. We're not traveling very much, so we wanted a way to keep up with all of you. So welcome back. Uh, we've got, of course, myself, Josh Tomlin. We've got Josh Carey over there. And my lovely wife, Abigail, is joining us on this episode. Hello. And uh, we're happy to see all of you. Happy, to, Good to see, good to be seen. Mm-hmm. Uh, last episode, we highlighted a record very briefly. We, of course, we have some of Josh Carey's vinyl album collection back here. <laughs> Can you reach behind you and grab that that's sitting on top? This was a... Where did you get this, out of curiosity, before uh, we... I think it was given to me... By my wife's grandmother. Okay. Um, we uh, actually here on the Cumberland Thunder YouTube channel, there's a video where we uh, talk about the last five years of the band and briefly touch on the Blakey Quartet that you and I mm-hmm. traveled together in. And um, for those fans of the Blakeys, there may be a couple of familiar faces, but this is. An album of the Rock of Ages Quartet, mm-hmm. um, local to the Russell County. Um, I think they had. Did they have some Adair County people in there too? But I'm sure they probably did. At, at least at one time or another. But yeah, um, just a quartet local around here. This mm-hmm. is this is one of the things I love to find. We were somewhere. I think we were at the Salvation Army store in Stanford a few years back, and we found an album that. Somebody locally there in Stanford had made, and it wasn't anybody we'd ever heard of, but we bought it because, you know, why not? Yeah. But yeah, uh, I thought it was a pretty interesting find. We did a little listening to it the other day, had some familiar songs on it. And uh, yeah, so that's our our highlighted highlighted album of the week. We'll leave that there. Oh, yeah. We'll have to see what we do next mm-hmm. week. But mm-hmm. um, A lot has happened since the last podcast. We've... Pretty much gone through all of 2021. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and totally didn't do what we said we was going to do. <laughs> That's right. We're sorry. But we have been keeping the vlogs going fairly consistently. Yeah. People like to see what goes on behind the scenes. So you've seen the episodes of Thunders rolling. And while you're here on the YouTube channel, once you're done with this, feel free to go over and check out all of the Thunders rolling videos. You'll see us in all kinds of situations. Um, We didn't vlog the five-year celebration concert just because, namely because there was just so much happening and going on. But I thought we could give people a little recap of maybe what they missed or or kind of how that weekend went. Um, I am going to... So there was a story I told the people that night, a true story from the road. I'm not going to tell it on this episode, um, we're going to have Seth on soon, and since he was kind of directly involved in the story, I'm going to wait and tell it when he's here, but that'll give you a little teaser, a little um, reason to tune in next time, um, which there's plenty of other road stories that we could tell. But yeah, so the five-year celebration concert, uh, first of all, we were pretty much backstage for the whole hour proceeding while doors were open. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I walked out, like it was our cue, Seth's out there on the drums, and I walked out, I don't know what anybody else was expecting, but I, I'm not gonna say I expected a small crowd, but I was bracing, I was mentally preparing myself, like, mm-hmm. Josh, if there's, <laughs> if there's 15 or 20 people out there, you better just, I mean, don't, <laughs> I think I told myself, just just keep it, Keep yeah. it happy. Don't react. But we had quite the opposite. It was a pretty good crowd. Pretty good crowd. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, in number and in energy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was. Um, I was surprised like the rest of us. I don't care to say that I was expecting a very small crowd <laughs> when we were preparing when we were preparing for all of this. Um, uh, Pastor Bucky at yes. Jamestown Christian Church, so gracious, uh, met with us the... Uh, few weeks before 
And he said, oh, so, uh, so we can set out more chairs. They, ha they don't have pews in the church. They have the seats. A lot of people are, are going to that, and they're, they're really great because you can, uh, you know, rack and stack with those. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. But anyways, he's like, you know, we can have more seats in the front. And, and <laughs> I looked at Josh. <laughs> Josh knew exactly what I was going to say as soon as I looked at him. And I looked at Bucky, and I was like, we're not going to need those <laughs> chairs. <laughs> and he was like, what? Why? I was like, we're not going to feel I was like, if we get, like, if we were to get, like, 40 or 50 people, um, I was like, we'll be happy. You know, we'll be totally fine with that. And honestly, I was expecting less than that. But that, honestly, 40 or 50 was going to be my cap. So yeah. he was like, really? I was like, <laughs> yeah, really? Uh, you're not talking to a nationally known uh, <laughs> recording artist. <laughs> he he gave a, and then he said, I expect that many people from our home church, which honestly, I, I think mean, we have Jamestown Christian Home Church to thank for quite a number of the people that were yeah, there. But I agree. Uh, we all had a little bit of, each of us had a little bit of family there. Mm -hmm. um, your dad was there, your grandpa came, and of course, we know, see, I'll talk about him because he's not here. Yeah. Seth Hayes travels with the Seth Hayes fan club. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> he he has a whole um, the Whoop Club. Yeah. Now, see, my my family, I I've, I've been on the road in some form now since I was fourteen. They're over it. They've seen. <laughs> they know what I sound like. They know what I look like. It's all good. But now, Seth Hayes, he has the. He has the... Uh, He's got ride or die. That's right. When we played out in Marion, Virginia, which is... Uh, how far from here? Um, it five was, hours? Four hours? Yeah, it was like... Yeah, it was close to yeah. five. Enough to be a mild inconvenience. His mom and dad were right there. Yeah. And they live <laughs> a, another hour. Yeah, yeah. And they, so. they live an additional hour away. So... Um, no, more than that. Yeah, an hour and a like half, an hour two hour. hours, yeah. Mm -hmm. a long way. Depending on, now, I don't know how they drive. Maybe maybe, maybe his mom and dad have got a lead foot. I don't oh, know. Wayne. <laughs> um, who has helped us out of a bind. There is a vlog on here where you get to see uh, Seth's mom and dad oh, when man. we played uh, the amphitheater there at Litchfield. Mm -hmm. um, the, no, the tire. Mm -hmm. Too many things have happened. We've been stuck <laughs> on the side of the road too many times. Too many times. We heard a a loud bang. Oh, I, was I asleep? I was gonna say you were asleep. <laughs> I was also. Asleep. And I was zoned out. Um, you know, just we were on a straight stretch, and I was just like, you know, sometimes you get in a in a way of driving, just watching and, the miles go by. You are, you are, <laughs> and and you're just kind of you're just plugged in to to the road and. <laughs> and I, I was sitting there, obviously driving, and Josh was sitting there asleep, and just the loudest burst <laughs> of energy came <laughs> from the back uh, portion, uh, back portion of the RV. And I knew, I feel like I knew what it was, and I was praying that it was something else. Yeah. Um, but oh, Josh, just a, just a bump in the road. Yeah. Josh pops up. <laughs> <laughs> He looks at me, and he was like, what was that, man? I was like, we blew a tire. And sure enough, we did, and that wasn't all we blowed out. We uh, blowed out a radiator hose that was running back through there and spit out all our uh, radiator fluid. And so, antifreeze. Why did I just say radiator <laughs> fluid? Yeah. <laughs> antifreeze. Brake wrong. fluid yeah. and uh, blinker fluid. Yeah. Blinker fluid and... That's uh, right. No. See... I had a similar experience on the Blakey's bus, you know, seven, eight years ago, and it pretty much happened exactly like, now, all it damaged was the tire, maybe it bent the frame out a little mm -hmm. bit, but, like, you know, and it happened, that happened, though, on an on-ramp? On like we were... Headed to E-Town. Yeah, on an on-ramp. Mm -hmm. You were there, yeah. yeah. Because you, you had your camera. I did. I was vlogging that weekend, just mm -hmm. and yeah. it just so happened that was... And, and so when I was jolted up out of a sleep, I was like, this is a familiar sound. <laughs> I know this yeah. sound. 
I've I've feared this sound. Yeah. I was laying on the couch and I was asleep, and then it felt like an explosion, and then I just like my eyes open and they're boom, 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 boom. I was like, that's not a good sound. That shouldn't be happening. Yeah. I mean, it, it basically it. I mean, it's an explosion of air. I guess it's. Yep. And there was yeah. when that tire was shredded. It was. Um, that piece that you found. Yeah. We found where it went. Oh, okay. It's off the RV. So it is. Okay. Mm-hmm. So I went walking and I found something in the uh, road. And, you know, it's a busy. Is it, was that the interstate or just the parkway? It was the Western Kentucky Parkway. Okay. Western Kentucky Parkway. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, I just ran out the road and grabbed it. And. He's a manly man. <laughs> And uh, and it was just a piece. It had like a nail in it, and it was like a white. I was like, eh, maybe this is off the RV, or mm-hmm. where did it come off of? It was like off of the one one of the bays. It was made out of that uh, cube. Yeah, tubing that metal. Yeah, and had a big old, <laughs> a big old metal screw, in in mm-hmm. the side of it. And so, yeah, I looked at Dad and I said. I was like, well, let's see if we can find where this is at. And he's like, oh, it's right here. And I was like, oh, okay. We're going to try to put it back on? No, we're not going to worry about that. And I was like, oh, okay. All right. And there was a piece of tire back there in the road, too, that yeah. I picked up. Yeah. Yeah. And it rolled off there. I yeah. Mean, it was like, it is what they filleted. call an alligator. Yeah. Yeah. Alligator in the middle of the road. Yeah. Not fun. And no. and that was when, that was when uh, Seth's dad came. Well, they all came. The whole Hayes family came to the rescue. Yeah, His dad had a pickup truck that could pull the trailer with all of oh, our sound equipment. My we threw our instruments in there. Uh, Seth was able to haul me and you in his in his car. Yep. Um, and I rode with Wayne. I tell you something that uh, we lucked out also on. So we've had various instances where we've had to use other people's vehicles to pull this trailer it's a heavy old thing and you really need something that's kindly stout to to pack it around um so we uh, wayne hooked the the trailer to his truck and um i didn't even think about it but we traveled from where we broke down to the venue, back home Mm -hmm. with said truck and trailer that he let us borrow on the wrong size ball. (laughs) By the grace of God. (laughs) It's too small. Which also, if I, I don't know what the statute of limitations is on this, but the, the, the wrong hookup for the brake lights. So they were, they were a no go. We were, (laughs) (laughs) we were, uh, uh, let's see what direction. We were eastbound and down in it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We were eastbound and down. And, uh, yeah. So, thankfully, we made it home with no trouble. Um, yeah. And the reason that I found out, it, it wasn't necessarily, because you can, sometimes you got the wrong one, but it's big enough to where the, the, that the, uh, the trailer won't fly off of it, you know, or anything like that. This was one of those instances where it very if we would have hit something mm-hmm. and not had enough tongue weight, we'd have been in trouble. That thing would have come off. And I found that out when we used Larry Holt's truck a little bit later. Our the ball that's supposed to go on that hitch uh, on the that trailer tongue is uh, significantly bigger than than like a two inch ball. And that's what we was about to pack with us up to uh, Georgetown that one day. That's right. Yeah. And he saw that and he said, son, don't you do that no more. <laughs> I said, okay. Okay. Yeah. Noted. <laughs> Duly noted. Well, thank you to Larry Holt then. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I mean, that I was trying to count the other day, especially when I was putting together the video for the concert um looking over the last five years and there's a brief shot in that video where you just see you standing on the side of the road next to the rv yeah but i was trying to think of all of the times all of the different things that have happened and how many times we were stranded on the side of the road and it's i was i was trying to get an actual count mm-hmm. and it's to the point where i can't count it yep. anymore several several 
several small ones, several big ones. Mm -hmm. There was the one that was the most frustrating because we didn't have a date to get to, but I was supposed to go to a church and preach one Sunday night, and then yeah. I mean I it, it did not. Happen. Oh yeah, really and you were sick. you were really sick. And we had stopped at a gas station, and I was, was like sleeping, and I thought I could go use the bathroom, but I don't want to get up, so I didn't. And it was about thirty minutes later that it broke down, and it was a good what do you say three hours mm -hmm. before we got anywhere. And this 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 was in the van, so yeah. there's no yeah, yeah. And no so RV at that I point. I was miserable. <laughs> Shoo. Yeah, it is miserable when you I mean when you get out on the road and get sick or mm -hmm. you know it, it's been awful. It was hot that day too. Mm -hmm. Seems like it happened on what, like some of the worst hot you days. Know, hot, hot days. days. <laughs> Fortunately, the last one was it was actually starting to get a little chilly that night, but like yes, the sun was was pretty good during the yeah. day, so it, <clears throat> yep. we had that added blessing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you were talking about getting sick on the road. I was trying to think of times that the idea of the show must go on, mm -hmm. and times when we've been on stage and maybe something wasn't right physically, and then, but just kept going. I remember one time singing at a church here in Russell County. It's the only time, personally, I've ever had to cut it short. Mm -hmm. I remember looking at you, and I don't, it was something that, it was my stomach, but it just kind of hit me like that. Yeah. And then, after it was over, I was fine. It, there was no, there were no long-standing repercussions. Well, one time, I forget where the church was. It wasn't too far, but it was a white church up on the hill. Oh yeah, yeah. there was a in dog Kiskin. up there. It was really in the early days, and you had the flu. Oh, the, oh, I'm thinking of a separate thing. Yeah. And the lady stole our keys. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, I remember that. Yeah, I. I didn't know I had the flu, and this is pre this is years ago. This is um, I thought I had a sinus infection, and it turned out I had the flu. That was a, yeah, but I was still there. But we we didn't cut it short. But thankfully, no. back in those days, our set was mm -hmm. pretty pretty hasty. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Turn and burn. Turn and burn. Yeah. The one, the one where my stomach bothered me. That's the one where I remember I looked, I looked at you, and I was just like, mm. <laughs> and you were like, yeah, let's pack it in. And uh, there was one time this uh, this happened at the Kentucky Opera. The first time we played oh, yeah. at the Kentucky <laughs> Opera. <laughs> I was Ab just playing bass at the time. Abby does not have the strongest of stomachs. Just in general, whether I blame my mother. on a good day, it's just, yeah, you know, uh, case in point, we <laughs> went to, we went to, when we were in New York, when her and I were in New York City, we went to a Broadway show and she spent the second half of it in the bathroom just violent, I'm going to say violently retching. Well, you said you could hear me. I could. Fortunately, we were in the very top, all the way in the back, and I knew what it was because I know what she sounds like. I felt so bad. But you said the usher, and I, of course, so I wasn't sweet. about to go into the ladies' room, but the so ushers nice. were there to help you yeah. out. They were checking in on me, and so were other guests, but yeah, I get sick. It was a good show, though. But anyway, <laughs> at the Kentucky Opry, we were getting down to the very end, and... We were going to do, it was a really piano-heavy song. Was mm. it Still Go Free? It, it might have been Still Go Free. And then we, after that, we were going to end with probably, I think we were going to do What a Day and then like mm. Never Shall Forget the Day, something like that. All the days. All the days. And Abby looked at me, and she, was, she, hadn't, she wasn't singing all the time at this time. Kristen was still there, and so Abby was just playing bass. But she was, you were sitting in a chair, I think, so in the back. Cool. And I looked, and most other people probably wouldn't have thought anything about it, but I know her well enough where I could tell something wasn't right. And 
we were just ending a song. The last chords were rolling out of the song. I didn't have an instrument. I was just singing, so I didn't have an instrument in my hand. And I leaned over and I said, "I'll I'll make sure there's time. I'll stall. You you go, and I'll <laughs> I'll make sure." So I gave a really long introduction to still go free, and then I think we just kind of kept it piano. Mm-hmm. I don't think anybody in the audience knew that that happened. Well, I don't think. Dressing room right off stage. Yeah, there was a dressing. That was a yeah dressing room right off stage. We did still go free. You came back out and you good, you're good, and uh, and we finished it off. And I think you were okay after that for the most part. For the most part, as okay as an Abby can be. Yeah, I mean, truly, that's no true statement has ever <laughs> spoken. Uh. Uh, God bless this one and all. <laughs> That's about the, but for the most part, I mean, we'll we'll carry through whatever. Well, there's the one time, because Josh Carey does not get sick often, but when you do get sick, I oh, mean, yeah. you get sick. Yeah. When we were going to Ashland, or Princess. Oh, mercy. And it was yeah. just going to be us three and Kristen, mm-hmm. and uh, you were driving, and you mm-hmm. never let anyone drive. <laughs> and I, yeah. I was, like, laying down in the back seat, and, or in the middle, and um, you stop at a stoplight. Yeah. And I don't know what you said to Chris, and it was just like switch or something. Yeah. And I said switch me places. You just, they pulled a Chinese yeah. fire drill right there at the yeah, stoplight. Yeah, we did. And then he went and laid down in the back until we got there. Mm-hmm. He was sick. And then we performed, and it wasn't very long. I forget how long those sets are. Uh, it's probably like in that 45 minutes yeah. to an hour. It wasn't. Not even that or, long, I think. They, those were very, oh, yeah, very there short Because there were like yeah. three other people, yeah. or two so, other people there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then I think you went out to the van and laid down. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I looked like I was on drugs. <laughs> <laughs> I looked like I was coming down. I mean, like, but you had the, the bags, and mm-hmm. then sort of like, not really sweating, but like, just yeah. the like, clammy. Mm-hmm. You did I, not look and I, <laughs> I'm bad to just not sit still anyways, but that day I was doing this, like this. You did look like you were coming down. Yeah, and so, uh, gosh, I can't remember that guy's name. The fella, he, he was, uh, hmm, I think he played the saxophone. Uh, I know you're talking Was his first name Sam, Al? Uh, Sammy? Sam, 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 uh, Sam, brother Sam, I can't remember. Anyways, he prayed for me. He did. He pulled us backstage. <laughs> that was very kind of him. And um and but we made it through. And it's it's weird in the middle of playing how that things will just subside. Mm-hmm. Because I felt awful before going up there. And then when we started playing, I was fine. And I guess it's probably just adrenaline taking over mm-hmm. and helping you, you know, pushing good chemicals through your body and yeah. your brain yeah. and you're like oh i'm okay after we got done back to being terrible like and then like slept all the way home i, I i've you never did. done that yeah. i don't think ever and uh i remember <laughs> i remember Kristen belting to the top of her lungs because she was getting sleepy um what, what song <laughs> am i thinking of abby uh, great the, escape. The great escape. <laughs> <laughs> she was belting out "Great Escape" all the way home. I just remember that, and I don't know if it woke you up, but you said something, and Kristen's like, "Got to, I'm sleepy," <laughs> or something yeah. like that. Yeah, I was pretty. I think I was getting grumpy because. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And then my fever broke in the middle. I, like I was running a fever and everything, and broke in the middle of the night. So. We had to play the next day. We did I remember play the that. next day. We were young and dumb. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, there, was, uh, there was one time we were at a church down in Tennessee, and uh, we were at the pastor's house the afternoon prior, or the, you know, leading up to the Sunday night concert, and I made the mistake of taking a nap. <laughs> and woke up from the nap with... I mean, it was a migraine. Mm-hmm. I mean, the, and it was... And we went and we played, and it was kind of one of those cases, it kind of felt okay while we were playing and everything. And then there was a bathroom back behind the stage area, and after it was over, I just darted back there and laid down in the floor and just put my head on the cool linoleum 
or the tile that was down there and just sprawled out. You all were very worried about it. Pastor was yeah. very, everybody was very worried about me. Yeah. but Because um, we couldn't find you. you. <laughs> I, and I got so mad at you because I knew you weren't feeling well. And, yeah. I, and I was asking, like, Brother Philip was his name. I was like, have you seen him? He said, yeah, he's laying down. He's in the bathroom floor. And I freaked out. And I ran back to him. <laughs> and you're like, I'm just laying down. I, you know, my head hurts. Like, you could have told somebody where you were. So we, we... We, nobody had any Tylenol or anything on them or like Excedrin, <laughs> but bless her heart, I don't, I don't, I, to the, I don't even remember. Maybe I do remember who it was, but anyway, some sweet, sweet lady had Midol, <laughs> and I was like, I will take it, yeah. and it helped. Within probably thirty minutes, I was, I was good. It is good, yeah. yeah. Got a little caffeine boost in there. My voice got a little higher. No, I'm kidding. But uh, <laughs> well, I need to start taking it. Down. <laughs> but no, that was that was. And I, honestly, that's the worst headache I can remember having in a while. Yeah. In a while, it's it was bad. Bad to have a headache when you're trying to sing. Yeah. Mm. It just makes it worse. Well, especially if you're like really trying to put, and you're like pushing your voice up here and everything starts to resonate anyway and you get all that vibration going and all that air flowing and moving. Uh, if I had a dollar for every time we were practicing something and practicing a vocal and I look over and, and we get done and Josh just goes, yeah. my head hurts. <laughs> just like that, yeah. yeah. As we discussed earlier, my stomach isn't the best mm. and when I get migraines... I get really sick to my stomach. I think it was just, uh, maybe it was the anniversary or a couple weeks ago. Or no, we were we were practicing, and you all just look at me, and I'm like, well, because I had a oh, really yeah. bad headache. And I kind of got sick, and I had to rush upstairs. And then I came back down, I'm like, I'm good, I'm good. But it just, my head hurt so bad. I'm glad this went this direction. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I could talk about my ailments all day. <laughs> I've got plenty. We know. <laughs> uh, let's talk about happy things. Let's talk about good things. What's good? Your stylistic choice of one sleeve rolled and one <laughs> sleeve unrolled. Oh, it's not on purpose. Statement? Uh, sure. <laughs> I got home from, I wore this somewhere, I wore this to the Dollar General, one of the many that's here in Russell County. Yeah. And I got home and I looked and I was like, wait a second, did I go out like this with one unrolled and one rolled? And I thought, hmm, I guess I did. It looks purposeful. Does it really? Okay, I'll take it. It's all about the confidence. That's right. I am, if nothing else, confident. I mean, you see, like I have leggings on, I have one rolled up and one down i don't care it's not on purpose but i roll with it but <laughs> maybe it is thunder. maybe it is making no fashion statements bold moves uneven clothing yeah that's the statement what else is good oh we got a puppy yeah we got a puppy i mean i got a puppy that's going her well. name is yeah. chloe she she's is 12 weeks sweet. tomorrow um spoiled already very much so that's good that's, that's good. good that's yeah. good yep and She's cute. I guess one big thing that's happened bigger than the puppy since the last is... Um, yeah, yeah. There's, you got yeah. a baby something. I do. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yeah, that's right. Baby Charlie. He's in the world. And he's now... Two months and some change. Two months and some he's change. He's September 13th. You know that and a dollar will get you a cup of coffee. That's exactly right. <laughs> well, I could use a cup right now. <laughs> I ain't gonna lie about it. It doesn't look like you need it. <laughs> Why? You're pretty, you're pretty up. Am I? Yeah. Well, I'm not always, but I am today. Good Glad to have you with us. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, a reminder to everybody. Of course, you're. If you're watching this, you're watching it here on our YouTube channel. Um, YouTube is very kind to channels who have a lot of people who not just watch their videos, but actually subscribe to the channel. Indeed. And looking, I, 
what you don't know is that I can look into the analytics of the YouTube videos and it'll say, this is how many people are watching your videos, this is what percentage of those people are subscribed. Less than 30%, less than 30% of our regular viewers mm -hmm. are subscribers. So, if you like the videos and you watch and you enjoy, may I kindly implore you <laughs> to subscribe to the channel. Because what that does, that helps YouTube's algorithm pu push these videos, push our vlogs, um, music, everything that we put out here to a wider audience. And it helps us out. It enables us to be able to make more videos like this. Um, you know, the more popular they get, the more we definitely will produce. And so, yeah. And th for all of you that already have, we do not take you for granted. We thank mm -hmm. you very much. Uh, this year alone, um, mm -hmm. the channel has grown more um, in 2021 than it has yeah. in all of its existence for the last ever how many years yeah. that we've had the channel up. So we appreciate it. That's all, all you guys. Also, if you hit the like, mm -hmm. that helps. Engagement helps. Um, and if you're re putting it out on iTunes or podcast? Not at the moment. Okay. Well, if ever this is somewhere podcasty, write a review. Um, yeah. That helps. And also, comment on the video. You can comment anything. Let us know if you like it. Yeah. Um, let us know... Any topics you'd like us to cover? Yeah. Anytime, because it because you don't you don't you blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. goodness <laughs> good radio. Um, <laughs> it'll usually be these two, but you know me and Seth will come in. We have, we may have guests. Oh, we'll but, definitely have some guests. We'll have some guests. Oh but, yeah. Um, any topic. We're gonna have the Rock would, of Ages in here. <laughs> any topic you'd like us to cover, um, even if you want to maybe. Guess at some records that yeah. are here. I'm sure he's got them. He well, mm -hmm. and we've got and Abby and I have our own record collection. You've got yes. yours. Oh, yeah. And, yeah, between uh, the two of us, we can probably cover a multitude yeah. of genres. Oh, yeah. That's Maybe. Nice. Or if you've got suggestions that we should look oh, yeah. into and pick up. Yeah. Well, we would like I'm all well. for that because you ever just feel like you haven't heard enough music? You just feel like you haven't. Oh, yeah, like, absolutely. I used to feel. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm just saying, like, um, you've heard a lot of mainstream, yeah. Mm -hmm. But there's people that you may have that you've never heard of, mm -hmm. and and maybe, unfortunately, never will that have put out really great music. Yeah. Send them to us. Yeah. Send them to us. Tell you who I recently discovered, and it was through a weird rabbit hole of, I love, I love the idea of being a session musician and the life that a lot of those guys and gals have and what it takes to, because I love the, we all love that creative process and mm -hmm. the music that we make and, you know, we're playing mm -hmm. out on stage, but then we kind of get to come in here and, and kind of turn the, the studio version of ourselves on. And so um, I went through this weird wormhole of... of uh, kind of a deep dive in the music of Steve Lukather for people who don't know who Steve Lukather is. He played on all kinds of, played guitar on all kinds of records in the eighties and nineties and, um, just a lot of big hit songs, but then everybody knows the song, uh, his band did Africa by Toto and all of that. I don't know it. But then <laughs> never heard of it, <laughs> but then he talks about getting his start. Um, the first, like solo he ever played in a studio was for um, somebody by the name of Boz Skaggs. Mm -hmm. And so I started diving into that whole. So yeah, I've, I've been on a whole discovery of, which that whole 70s era to me is, is yeah. I, I'm hesitant to say the pinnacle of musical perfection because I would hope that our best days of music are ahead of us. But uh, there's some good stuff there. Yeah. Some good stuff. I think we're chasing the dragon. <laughs> <laughs> but I agree with you. I, I mean, you always hope. You never oh, yeah. give up. That's the thing. That's what make, helps make it fun. What helps make it... That, is that right? Yeah. That's, it's funner when you chase it. 
<laughs> and yeah. and sometimes you can stumble upon upon things that uh, you know maybe worked years and years and years ago, and you've just discovered it for yourself, and that's a beautiful thing to to be able to do. And um, but yeah, I agree with you. Seventies is great. I love the sixties too. Oh yeah. yeah. Somebody said something. Um, I was watching a video the other day. They were discussing musical legends that are still with us and some that are, are not retired yet but are actually still making and producing and touring and, and, and thing. And it's a lot of those guys from the 60s and 70s, but they're mm-hmm. still in music. And as for us as a band, we have the best stuff that we've ever done, but I still think we've not yet made our like the best thing. We've not yet made the best thing that Cumberland Thunder will ever do. Um, but they were talking about how for a lot of these guys, you know, they have lists and lists of number ones through the sixties and seventies and eighties and um, all these stages they've played on, but they're still making music and for them to do that and do it creatively and well, they they have to think that they're making their best music now. Mm. Even though everybody's going to go, oh, I love that album from 76 mm. or whatever, you have to maintain the mentality that you're making your best music now. Otherwise, it would be a very depressing yeah. <laughs> existence. I've seen some interviews that they they actually get kind of irritated when, when getting asked about you know the old stuff. It's like, no, I, w- I want to focus on what's what's ahead. What I'm doing right now. Yeah. I, I'm sure that that it can get kindly. Uh, I don't know if skitzy is the right word, but just uh, you can't settle. Yeah, you can't ever be satisfied. You just gotta. But then also, you can't take the moment for granted. Yeah. No, and no. so you gotta live in the moment, but also look ahead. <laughs> and yeah. It's kind of a uh, odd tightrope to walk. It's just also where just enjoying it comes in. Mm-hmm. You know, you if you love it, you're going to keep wanting to get better um, and change, but then appreciate what you did in the past. And yeah. Whether if you're just doing it for money or fame, then you're pushing and pushing and you're miserable. And, and a lot of times be- people can tell, unfortunately. Yeah. I mean, I've heard some artists, older artists that are just doing it because, you know, they used to be something, and they're not great. Yeah. They're new stuff. They're, it's just money grabbers, mm-hmm. you know, because they know they can sell because of their name. But it, you can tell the passion is just long gone. Mm. Yeah. I hope our passion continues. I love, well, here's the thing. I love the process. Yeah. I love every part of the process. Um. I think it was Arthur Rice, a wonderful, wonderful singer, part of the Kingdom Airs. Um, Somebody asked him one time in an interview, they said, if you weren't traveling singing, what would you be doing? And he said, I'd probably be working in a studio. (laughs) And I was like, I I like that. (laughs) Just loving every part of of the process. And um, yeah, the creative... Uh, you said something in. I'll reference once again. You need to watch the the the, the Cumberland Thunder five year story that's that's here. Uh, Carrie dropped some wonderful nuggets of truth, but you said uh, about how rewarding it is to be a part of the process where you create something out of nothing. Yeah. You know, you take something yeah. that never existed before and then turn it into a song that hopefully people enjoy. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Um... I guess if I if I had to just just work in a studio, I would. I don't know a studio that would <laughs> that would have me because I'm a terrible studio musician. <laughs> but uh, you could tune the piano. Yeah, 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 yeah. But I don't know. Um, I don't know if I would enjoy it as much as if if I didn't get to let if I didn't get to deliver it to someone. The ability to be able to uh, let someone experience a song, I think that's as much a gift to us as it would be to somebody. I mean, hopefully it'd be a gift to them, but uh, they would feel that way. But 
Um, but man, if I if I cr helped create something and and didn't really get to take it to anyone, mm -hmm. I feel like some of it would be lost for me. There was um, we just recorded. Well, it's even still, it's not been that long ago. We recorded the song "I Can Depend on You," and uh, that's here on the channel. But I we hadn't released it yet, and Abby and I had a friend over at the house, and and I was working on mixing it. It was almost done, and I said, "Listen to this," and um, he hadn't heard anything that we'd done in quite a while, and just the. It was a very positive reaction, which I was thankful for. But just that that moment, of, it's kind of that idea when you find, when you find, for those of you that are on TikTok, Abby and I will will like videos and then have our TikTok time where I show her the ones I found and she shows me the ones she found. But like, you're not watching the video. You're what you're showing it to the person, then you're watching the <laughs> yeah. part, and you're like, are they gonna? Oh, are they gonna find yeah. this as funny as I found it? Do they? And it's that same thing when you're when you're you've created a piece of music and and you lay it out there and then you're like, huh, huh, huh. And you know whatever reaction is is fruitful to you because yeah. even if it's negative, you know because absolutely then, then you can learn. Mm -hmm. and, and you know you really have to get a wide scope on it. I mean it hurts more, but uh, <laughs> yeah. but if you if you get a wide scope on it, I mean if you know, people don't receive it, then they don't receive it. Mm -hmm. And you just kind of go, well, all right, well, back to the, back to the lab. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would rather have a constructive negative review than just a blanket good job. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Well, I well, you remember the, uh, Les Butler. I remember that. He, he took uh, our live album and and critiqued it and and said you know which we were very appreciative it of it was really well thought out and yeah and, and helpful to us and since then we've we've changed very much since that mm -hmm. live album but um I mean you know I told him that I was going to send him our our next one to see what he thought about it cuz it's just <laughs> so much different than than that but um but yeah, and then the another fellow that actually yeah, listened that's right. to "I Can Depend on You." And, yeah, and he gave some constructive feedback, mm -hmm. and and all of it was very, you know, in a positive light. Um, and I think that's that's important. But yeah, I would rather take that mm -hmm. than. I I think it was you that said "Good job" has killed, the phrase "Good job" has mm -hmm. killed a whole lot of. Uh, good music or something like that. Just that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because I, I think that when when somebody simply just puts that over, that is their critique. That is their comment. Um, you know, sometimes, honestly, sometimes there is nothing that you can say. Mm -hmm. I've said that to people, mm -hmm. um, but then there are other times that, especially from people that you're close to, that's the thing. You don't want to, I, I don't want to hear that from people that I'm close to because I know, <laughs> I know what I can and can't do and what I need to improve on. So, which then the flip side of that coin is like, well, why do you even need them to critique if you already know it? Mm -hmm. But it's like, it's like a confirmation. Mm -hmm. It's like, Okay. Yes, I'm correct in thinking that this is what I need to improve on. Um, but yeah, but just saying good job is just like it murders any <laughs> any progress that you might could have, and and maybe maybe you could have something really good on your hands, mm -hmm. and then somebody's like, oh, good job. And that, yeah. And you just go on. I was like, oh, okay. It doesn't need anything else. Yeah. Maybe it does. <laughs> maybe yeah. it does. So. Yeah, I get a little worked <laughs> up about that. Yeah, Josh knows that if he wants an honest opinion mm. on anything to show it to me, 
Because I give, I don't, I'm not mean. No, she's not mean at all. I give constructive criticism, but I I don't just tell them, oh yeah, that's good, and then go on. I say, yeah, that's pretty good, but you know, I don't like this, or this is too much. Mm Because we have very different tastes. We have different tastes. I trust you a lot, especially in, in matters of, especially if I'm working on some musical project alone, I trust you a lot in matters of arrangement. Because you have a good idea, a sense of, um, especially when it comes to anything related to instruments I don't necessarily play, wind instruments, wind instruments and the whole, that you, you, you know the limitations of the instrument and sometimes you've reined me in and gone, mm, no. <laughs> especially with trombones, because there's some things that you've done, I'm like, a trombone... There are trombone players that could do that, but <laughs> <laughs> it's not very feasible uh, yeah. or realistic. Yeah. That's funny. <laughs> you know, you were, we were talking about the whole good job thing, mm-hmm. and it just reminded me of a funny story. I, I won't, I won't call out the person by name, but <laughs> there, there is a, and the story's about me anyway. It's not really. I mean, it's on me, not really on him. But there was a a nationally touring, within his genre, well-known musician. Not really the guy that's like at the front of the, you know, the stage. He's more of the kind of in the background kind of guy. But for those who follow the particular genre and style, like, you know who he is. And he's been in the game for longer than I've been alive and can play and sing circles around me. And I saw him in a context... Um, not normally, it, it was a, a an event that, you know, he wasn't kind of, I'm not going to say he wasn't in his element, but he wasn't where I would normally be used to seeing him. And, and, and I was like, is that, is that that guy? <laughs> and Navi's like, yeah, I think he did. Like, oh. and then sort of, I go to Facebook and I'm like, uh, yep, that's him. <laughs> and, um, and so after this particular event, I, I went, uh, to the I found him in the parking lot because like, I've got to I've got to say something, and when someone is at that caliber, and at this time this was probably six seven years ago at least, maybe more, more than that, we eight were, nine years ago. We weren't even engaged. We were so, time ago. you know, I'm nobody, right. and he has had success long before I was ever born. What do I say to a person like that? That's you know, what do you say? What so. Did you say? So, <laughs> Abby hates this story. Hate she, as soon as as soon as this was over, as, as soon as this interaction was over, she was like, "What, you, what was that?" <laughs> I go up to him and I was like, "Are you?" And he's like, "Yeah, yeah, I am." I said, "Oh, great! Love your music. Love what I think." I shook his hand. I was like, "I love your music. I love what you do. Been a big fan." And I was like, "Keep up the good work." <laughs> And I didn't mean it necessarily in the condescending will. way. <laughs> yeah. I didn't mean it in the condescending way that it came across. But I was just like, I, I thought I was just really being an encourager. You know, I thought I was just really. You needed encouragement. And I was just like, keep up the good work. And we walk away. He didn't really say anything after that. Oh, it was I'm cringing. So str- like, he, he smiled, but it was like a. Okay, and he he just walked on <laughs> graciously. And I just like, why would you say that? That's so funny. To to him who You know why you know why I said it? Hmm. Cuz I wanted him to keep up the good work. <laughs> well, I mean, he's been on <laughs> Grammy nominated projects. Oh, yeah, he's been on everything. Yeah. But but yeah, I I thought it was I thought it made sense in the Your intentions were pure. Yeah, they were. Well, I know that, but Still, it um, it bothers me <laughs> to think about. It's I am embarrassed, and I recently had a deep embarrassment myself. So even thinking about that, it hurts me almost as much. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. In my recent interactions. <laughs> it's like the other day, Kristen had a nurse, and she was from uh, the UK, and her. Apparently had been around, had been in the states and in this area for many years. Okay, but she still she kept her accent, mm-hmm. 
and <laughs> she's oh, no. plugging Kristen up and <laughs> Kristen linked the, she looks over me I'm sitting in a chair she looks over me and she's like I love her accent <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like don't say anything about it <laughs> because you know what she hears 30 oh. times a day probably <laughs> I just love your accent where are you from <laughs> So, we found out from a third party. <laughs> what was that? Uh, what was that? Uh, Vine, R.I.P. Vine. Uh, it's like, I loved your accent. Where are you from? I'm a librarian. <laughs> or, no, 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 no. I've messed it up. Oh, yeah. It's like, I love your accent. Where are you from? And they're like, I'm Liberian. Like, oh, sorry. I love your accent. Where are you from? <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's what it was. <laughs> Good times. Good times. All right. But I bet he's keeping up the good work, though. Oh, yeah. You know, uh, he, still he, he still is. Not in the same avenue that he was before, but I actually just saw a recent post on Facebook, and I saw him there keeping on, keeping on, doing the same thing that he, you know, has done for 30, 40 plus years, and he's kept up the good work. Something I think we should address yeah. that's... Sad, but also could be celebratory. Miss Diane Wilkinson oh, yeah. just passed yes, away. Yes, saw that. Yeah. And maybe not the first thing I should have thought of when when I found out the news um, is you commented on some post and she I did. <laughs> and she I did. asked you. Uh, Mr. Tom, or just, I can't remember what yeah, she I said. Yeah, I think it was something to the effect of, are, are you a songwriter or something yeah. like you that. You were critiquing something about songwriters. Yeah, I think it was a general comment about yeah. gospel music songwriters. Yeah, and she... <laughs> I feel like that if you would have said, no, I'm not a songwriter, there might have been some smoke. <laughs> yeah. But... <laughs> well, I, I, I saw somebody post, um, because she's written so many, I mean, songs that I grew up with. <laughs> right. Boundless Love, We Shall See Jesus. Heavy hitters. Uh, Homeland, which is, in my opinion, that's what we call a sleeper hit, because not as many people know Homeland, but I really, really like Homeland. Um... Plenty of it, uh, plenty of others, but someone made a post that said um, there was no bigger fan of songwriters mm-hmm. than Diane Wilkinson. Yeah. That she was there to encourage, whether you were just starting out or whether you had, um, you know, written as many number one hits as she had. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, that she was there to encourage, and. Uh, and so, I f- yeah, that could have gone either way. But yeah. honestly, I was I was happy for the interaction because yeah. I think I think at some point she said, uh, you know, basically to keep to up keep, the good yeah, work. To keep, well, yeah, <laughs> but to keep sharing the the good news of Jesus. Yeah, um, I remember. I never I never formally met her. I saw her in person a, a couple of times at the National Quartet Convention. Yeah. But I remember she won an award, a songwriting award there. And there was nobody more shocked to have won a songwriting award than herself. That's crazy yeah. to me. And and it wasn't it wasn't <laughs> a put on, it wasn't a show, it was a very genuine um just shock mm-hmm. that she would win such a thing. And she said, she got up there and she said thank you. And and instead of making it about herself or anybody else, she addressed actually all the other songwriters in the room and wow. said something to the effect of we've got work to do. Mm-hmm. You know, we've got oh, work to do. I think I do. saw the video of that, yeah. And, uh, and that was special. And as a, at that time, I, you know, I'd written some, but, not to the extent that I have now, and that was very. She she very much promoted the gospel being presented, fully presented in the song. Not that, not that we don't do that, but um, she really wanted by the time you got done with the song to have mm-hmm. a complete picture of of what the good news was. Yeah. And so, while 
here she'll be missed and her talent will be missed and her encouragement will be missed. Uh, we're thankful for the promise that um, she's seen the place that she wrote about mm -hmm. for so long. Oh, yeah. Uh, I remember <laughs> uh, Joseph Habedank told me the story of there was a song that he would co-written with her called Room with a View, which I always thought was just such a pretty song. And uh, I asked him about it, and he said he said he had the chorus, and uh, he he said, "Well, I know Miss Diane; she loves a challenge." And he said, so he sent it to her, and she said, "Oh, sweetie, I've got to finish that. I've got to write that." <laughs> I said, "All right. I mean, what are you going to say? You're going to tell her no?" <laughs> <laughs> and so he had the chorus, and then she wrote the verses, and and uh, listen to Room with a View, great song, um, but. Yeah, she was just, oh, sweetie, I just, <laughs> honey, I've got to write that. Yeah. yeah. From, you were friends with her on Facebook. I was. And I would read some of her posts, and she was sassy. I loved funny, it. Funny, um, but mostly, mostly sweet and genuine. Oh, yeah. But she was, she had some sass. Mm hmm She was very funny. Yeah. <laughs> That's why I say, like, oh, if yeah. you would have said no. <laughs> no, I don't know anything about songwriting, but I'm going <laughs> to critique all these But I've got songs. an opinion. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You could feel her, like, her fingers oh, covered yes. over the board waiting for the answer. <laughs> oh, I bet she waited for your response for, like, all of five minutes. <laughs> I responded pretty quickly. I mean, when you see that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Diane Wilkinson commented on your post in regards to songwriting. You don't leave that un, uh, you don't leave that stone unturned. On red, as the kids say. On red. Yeah, mm. don't leave it on red. Yeah. That's right. That didn't feel as chewy going down. No, <laughs> <laughs> that one. Mm. That's not spicy. It tasted bad. No. I work with teenagers, so. Do you? Yeah, so I. I have to keep up. <laughs> with the lingo. With all the lingo. Yeah. Yeah, I have uh, never thought that I would be the person who was out of touch with, you know, I, I thought for a period of time, especially as a teenager, that I was going to be a kid forever. Still think it sometimes. And then <laughs> I hear people say things and I ask for the translation. And we were the other day, what was the phrase? We were laying in bed and we had heard, we'd seen on a TikTok or something, and someone said, but no cap. And we had a lengthy discussion about what that could mean, and we looked it up. There's some meaning, but it just means not lying. Yeah. For real. Like, it's seriously. like we would say, for real. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And we, we, I said, we, we're 80 years old. We're laying here discussing what this could mean. <laughs> And having to Google it because we could not figure it out. I can't remember what I looked up the other day, but yeah, I'm totally with you. Yeah. We're like, if Left something behind. is no cap and they say cap, we're like, what is that? <laughs> what, is, what does that mean? <laughs> Captain America? Yeah. That's the only cap I know. Yeah. And you know, you got the, the terms that are not new, but they're just, I guess becoming popular yeah. like when something that and when something's no good it's trash oh yeah it's, it's not like, oh that's just trash or you know yeah um what's another one yeah that's i i usually back. keep up with it w w with my cousin jack because he's <laughs> is he right in there is he 13 14 no he's uh, he's almost 16 now Goodness, he's old yeah <laughs> <laughs> hey i have i have long campaigned for the last 10 years and will continue to campaign for Groovy to make a comeback. I'm ready for Groovy to be a thing again. I'm nigh against it. I'm for it. So. Ready for Groovy. That's Groovy. Yeah. It's What's groovy. the um, Grody? Is grody. That, you, that was big I when I was in middle school. That was also, yeah. Something was, which I think I've is an 80s like thing originally. If something's grody, it's just nasty. It's gross. Yeah. It's grody. It I've never heard of that one. It's yeah. an 80s thing, but it made a comeback in middle school. I guess it didn't hit Russell County, but. Yeah. Hit Russell County. <laughs> didn't make it down here. Hey, I, it's, <laughs> it, it probably was, and I just. <laughs> You're too cool. No, I wasn't. <laughs> cool That's enough. the thing. I, I wasn't in there. I, I found out um, 
You remember uh, when something was when something was based? Mm. Yeah. Like I never used or that. basely. Mm-hmm. Beast mode. Beast mode. Yeah. yeah. Only the That's boys gone now. used that. That's true, <laughs> but I never use that one. Yeah. Um, I hear adults using this now, but I remember when it was kids saying something was wicked. Like mm-hmm. wicked good. Well, mm-hmm. that's a that's a New England thing. Mm, it yeah, but it it, it is, but it it, it kind of was the thing nationally for a while, and then now I hear people my age or just a slightly bit older than me saying it, and I think eh, I wasn't was... allowed to say that. Yeah, I wasn't either because because it's wicked. Yeah, because you're calling something. <laughs> Evil, and so my dad's like, "That's not good." You know, uh, they're like, gonna call evil good and, oh, and good gosh, evil. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's Bible. It's in the Bible. It's in the Bible. It's something else weird that kids say today. Oh, no, everything. Oh, everything. There's another video. With someone they were they said a sentence or two, and I truly I was like, "Are, are they speaking English?" <laughs> I did not understand a word. I did not glean a meaning. And then I use normal words. Like, I use glean. No one knows what that means. Oh, yeah. I use, um, I forget. There's just not even big words, what people call 10-cent words, that <laughs> them, I use. Them uh, high-point Scrabble yes. words. And, and you know, younger people, are like, what does that mean? I don't know. What is, what is, I don't know. What yeah, do yeah I, I've been in the same situation. Gucci. What does Gucci mean? Other <laughs> yeah, than, like, that's too expensive clothing. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, that and um, there was another one. I mean, we could we could explore the whole vernacular for hours, days. Yeah. But suffice it to say, uh, I'm still speaking the king's English. Yeah. I just feel old sometimes. Most of the time. You know, it's funny. Not many people would realize this, but sitting at this table right now, Abby is the oldest person at the table. Yeah, listening to my voice right now, you wouldn't know. But I it's a, it's 100% true. Five, five days. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Five days older than Josh. Which he looks 40 years older than me. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> That's so true. I'm the baby. Got to love me. Yeah. Just I've, because I'm cute and cuddly. My last boss I had, her favorite game was when people would come in, she'd be like, How old do you think she is? Oh, that's my favorite game. Oh, Guess yeah, Abby's was, age. And no one no one gets it right. The oldest people guess is eighteen. <laughs> but I am a decade older than that. I'm twenty eight years old. Most people say sixteen. Because I mean my voice doesn't help. <laughs> I know I sound like a baby. I was I was ordering food today and I was on the phone with Josh and I could on the speaker I could hear my voice back and I said, On the kickback from the speaker, I sound like I'm three years old. <laughs> yes. I would like some chicken nuggets. <laughs> I wasn't I was getting chicken, bone in chicken, like an adult. He was getting chicken tendies. Yeah, I gotta have my chicken tendies. <laughs> You know my boy likes his chicken tendies. <laughs> mm. yeah. Lord. I love how that <laughs> that you guys said that you're getting old. But <laughs> you're saying stuff like nuggies, <laughs> tendies. Well, that's what my cats call them, so. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm talking, but like, that is like... That's now, though. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I think that comes from being on TikTok or Vine. Vine yeah. is where yeah, yeah. I've... Nuggies came from. I get tendies from Evan because he would always say tendies. Yeah. Or yeah. fingies. Yeah. Yeah. Fingies, so. Yeah. <laughs> I heard one the other day, <laughs> and I hope it's not bad. <laughs> but I'm gonna we'll use, I'm we'll gonna, find I'm out. I'm going to say it anyways, boys. We'll cut it if... It's not bad, I don't think. <laughs> it was in reference to cookies. And it was something like, uh, something like, chocolatey, chunky, sussy boys. <laughs> sus- oh, yeah. Sus- oh, yeah, that is, that's it, sus. Oh, that's sus. sus, that's a big thing. Because yeah. um, Among Us. Yeah, yeah, for those of you who played the game Among Us, it kind of started there where, you know, it was sort of like, sort of like a whodunit game, basically. Yeah. And yeah. 
And if somebody, there was a chat associated with it, and if somebody was acting suspicious, they were mm -hmm. sus. Well, yeah. because the way the game, the game was pretty fast paced, so you had to do shorthand. Yeah. So I guess that just came from necessity because yeah. you, like, red seems pretty sus. sus. <laughs> <laughs> red is being very suspicious, takes precious game time. So, red yeah. sus. Kind of sus. Yep. And it's always red. <laughs> We were real into that game for a while. So here's my for question. Yeah. What makes chocolate cookies sus? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if it's because there is a Y on the end, if it gives it a different meaning. They're sussy? Sussy. Again, this is, I don't understand. Children. In the comments, please let us know. Let us know if we should maybe stop saying it. <laughs> but, uh, I might look it up, and then if we cut, you know, if we cut... <laughs> nah, it's fine. It's fine. We'll try to do it seamlessly, but <laughs> yeah, let us know in the comments. Ignorance of the law may be no excuse, but ignorance of new slang terms is. Yeah, it, they come on so quickly. Yeah, it's hard to keep up. Fleek was made a swift oh, yeah. entrance and exit. It was in and out. Fleek. Yeet. Let's yeet. talk about yeet. Which we still use yeet. I feel like that's still in the public eye. Though yeet is less, because for a while it was just like yeet, but now uh, th there's a complete term <laughs> that I hear used very often, and it's uh, yeeted myself into oblivion. I hear, <laughs> I hear that a lot. Just like yeah. uh, if yeah. if if uh, you know, <laughs> we're so old. <laughs> <laughs> Give me somebody really famous, just just mega super famous. Elvis, we'll go Elvis. That's safe. If I was just like, oh, <laughs> if if I was alive when Elvis was, oh. and he came up to me and was just shook my hand, I'd just yeet myself into oblivion, <laughs> and and it just means you just. It's like you remember ten years ago when girls would say, uh, I would just die, like just die, or you'd mm -hmm. say, oh, it's to die for. Mm -hmm. It's what, yeah, yeet. I started using that ironically. It's one of those things that I started to use ironically, and then now I just kind of use it for real <laughs> because it's fun. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like when you start garbage, like, yeet. Yeah. <laughs> when you start using something ironically, so much it comes eventually becomes unironic, and you just which is ironic. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's a vicious circle. Maybe we'll maybe Cumberland Thunder will inspire some, will inspire a new generation of of vernacular and vocabulary. I don't know, man. Cumberland, Cumberland <laughs> Thunder inspired, uh, you know, I mean, people already say, "Hey, why are you joshing around?" Do people even say that anymore? Not really. Only when we're around. <laughs> 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 Um. Well, we've gone for an hour and eight minutes. Have we really? We have, really. Ah, let's keep going. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I've got some plans. I mean, tell us about your plans I, before we go. When we leave here, and it's, um, what is it, 9.30? Eh, it's thereabouts. It's late. I, after a full day of work, I'm going to go home and steam up my floors. And I'm pretty Woo! excited. Crazy! <laughs> I got a new steam up, and I'm really excited. You could say over at the Talman's house, things are getting a little <gasps> crazy. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm, right. I'm pretty excited. Um, but, you know, that's what comes with being an adult. I get a new appliance. and uh, Yeah. You got to use it, man. Hey. My floors need it. I've got three cats and a puppy. And Which is this... four cats too many. So my floors are pretty dirty. And uh, I can't handle it anymore. <laughs> so so far just doesn't cut it with three cats and a puppy. I'm I need bad. to get a vacuum for down here. And as soon as I get it, I can't wait to break it in. So. <laughs> <laughs> that's what, being an adult, you get excited yeah. about cleaning. Which I guess is good, because I'm normally not excited about cleaning whatsoever. We'll take some excitement. It makes it fun, hey. That's right. Well, guys, we appreciate you sticking this one out with us. Mm -hmm. It means the world to us. Like we said, we're going to make these fairly regular over the winter, I think. 
Um, if you want to keep up with where we're going to be or when we'll be close to your area, you can always check our website, cumberlandthunder.com. And there's a few tour dates on there right now for the upcoming year. There's some new stuff coming down the pike that will be added on there. Um, we'll tell you all about that soon. But um, we only have one remaining date this year. Yep. We'll be at Sand Spring Baptist Church in Lawrenceburg, Kentucky, which is... Uh, I'm very excited for that. It's on New Year's Eve, and they've made it very clear this is not going to be a till midnight. This is not a watch night service. They said you're going to get home. They're going to cut it off at 10. Cutting it off at 10 o'clock. Cutting it off. So we might be eating some of them by the New Year. Like That's, the right. That's right. That's <laughs> right. I guarantee you we'll get home. What well, I, I would, wouldn't be surprised if we got out of there at like 11. Or even 12. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but come see us. If you haven't seen us yet, uh, maybe um, somebody the other day on our Facebook page said that they had only seen us on Facebook or on the internet. So if you're looking for an excuse, you probably already got, maybe you've already got New Year's Eve off from work. Just make the drive to Lawrenceburg, Kentucky. It's only as far as Lawrenceburg is from you. So, yeah, come on down. Um, you can find that information on our website and, and, of course, keep up with our Facebook page. We've, we're have we updating the Facebook page every day, and you'll find all kinds of little goodies on there. Sometimes we do little um, throwback Thursdays and flashback Fridays and caption this, and we'll share the YouTube videos on there as well. And again, if you haven't subscribed to the YouTube channel, please do so. If you have, thank you so much. We appreciate it. Indeed. Um, the next episode of the podcast, uh, I think we'll probably, we're going to have Seth on here and that'll be fun. I'm going to tell the story that I told everybody at the five year celebration concert. Um, and so you'll get to hear that and get to hear Seth tell his side of the story and defend himself. Uh, so that'll be fun. Yep. Anybody have any words of wisdom? Hmm. Mm. Don't leave your puppy unattended with your Christmas tree overnight. Like we are doing currently? Yes. Bad yeah. idea. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But it's fine. She'll be fine. We just this have, is fine. Half this is the fine. lights on the tree aren't working and the garden's yeah, all over right. the floor. And the bottom like quarter of the tree even has no ornaments on it. <laughs> it's a bad feeling when you got it like you want it and then... <laughs> Very temporary feeling. (laughs) (laughs) We love all you guys. Indeed. It's because of you that y'all keep the thunder rolling. And that means the world to us. Again, any updates, check cumberlandthunder.com. Check the YouTube channel, subscribe. Like our Facebook page, and we're on Instagram. We're sharing pictures on Instagram as well, so check that out. And we've even been known to occasionally share a TikTok video or two. So if you're on there, check it out. Cumberland Thunder. And follow. Yes. Share. Follow, share, like, comment, interact. All of those modern social media-y things. Mm -hmm. It means the world to us. Leave comments on uh, anything you want us to talk about. Any kind of videos you want us to do. Trying things out. Singing songs. um, Anything. You know, we're open to it. We'll... We may not do it, but we'll consider it. (laughs) All right. I think that wraps us up. Goodbye, everyone.